Assalamu alaikum, this is Dr. Hasna and today we will be discussing the first bone of the thorax and that is the median bone of the thorax known as the sternum. As you all know, the sternum is basically the main bone which is lying in the front of your chest wall right in the center where the ribs mostly connect to. So let's begin with talking about the parts of the sternum first. The sternum consists of one, two and three parts. The first part is the manubrium. This quadrilateral shaped bone is the manubrium. This has formed a joint with the second part of the sternum known as the body of the sternum. And finally, the tiny tapering end of the sternum is the third part known as the xephoid process. The sternum in its normal anatomical position is more convex forwards and it is concave behind. So you can see that it is convex forwards and concave from behind. Let's begin talking about the first part of the sternum known as the manubrium. Manubrium is basically the quadrilateral bone that bears two surfaces, one and two, and four borders, superior border, lateral borders two, and inferior border. The anterior surface and the posterior surface. The anterior surface is basically going to provide attachment to the muscles. The superior surface, which is actually very important, bears two types of notches. The first is just in the center of the upper part of the manubrium is a depression or a notch, which is known as the jugular notch, suprasternal notch, or the interclavicular notch. And on either side of the superior border are the clavicular notches from the sternoclavicular joints. Here is where the medial end of the clavicle articulates with the sternum. Then come the two lateral borders. The lateral borders are going to uh, articulate with the two costal cartilages. The upper first costal cartilage will articulate on either side of the manubrium forming the primary cartilaginous joint. And the second costal cartilage will only be articulating with the manubrium in its upper part because the rest of it will occupy the body of the sternum. The inferior border is forming a joint with the body of the sternum and the joint is the secondary cartilaginous joint. And finally, the posterior surface is going to form the anterior boundary of the mediastinum. Now let's discuss the muscle attachments on the manubrium. The manubrium gives origin to the pectoralis major on either side in the lower part. It gives on either side origin to the sternocleidomastoid, the sternal head of the sternocleidomastoid. Posteriorly, the manubrium gives attachment to the sternothyroid on either side and in the lower surface and the sternohyoid on the upper side. Another thing that is related to the posterior surface of your manubrium is the arch of aorta. The arch of aorta with its branches that are the right brachiocephalic artery and the left common carotid and the left subclavian artery. Moving on, let's talk about the body of the sternum. The body of the sternum is basically bears a lot of facets for the uh, articulation with the costal cartilages. So the second costal cartilage, third, fourth, fifth, sixth and the upper part of the seventh costal cartilage. It has an anterior surface and a posterior surface and obviously the two lateral borders that form uh, joints with the synovial joints with the costal cartilages. What are the muscle attachments of the body? On either side, it gives origin to the pectoralis major. Posteriorly, the body gives in its lower part origin to the sternocostalis muscle. In its upper part, it is basically making manubriosternal joint, which is a secondary cartilaginous joint. Let's move on to the xiphoid process, which is the third part of your sternum. The xiphoid process is forming with the body of the sternum, a joint which is primary cartilaginous joint. The xiphoid process is going to give, in its, from its anterior surface, it will give attachment to the rectus abdominis muscle, which is the muscle of your abdomen. From the posterior surface of the xiphoid process arise the diaphragm that we just studied, the diaphragm via two fleshy slips as we studied. There are other fibers also arising, mostly the eponeurosis of your abdominal muscles arising from the xiphoid process. So that was an overall uh, view of the sternum. 
with its muscle attachments and its bony features. Of note is to remember that the joint between the manubrium and the body is the secondary cartilaginous joint and the joint between the body and the xiphoid is the primary cartilaginous joint. Similar to this is the joint forming between the lateral border of manubrium with the first costal cartilage is also a primary cartilaginous joint. So the only secondary cartilaginous joint is right here. Also there is a very special feature over here. At the point where the manubrium joins the body, it forms an angle. This is the angle or this is a prominence that you can even feel when you touch your uh, median part of your chest right in the center. This prominence is called the angle of Lewis or the sternal angle. The significance of this angle is that the arch of aorta is basically beginning over here and arch of aorta is also ending from here. The few important clinicals of the sternum, whenever there is a biopsy required, it is mostly attained from the manubrium. When the sternum is depressed in your chest, it is depressed and the ribs are protruding out. While the sternum is depressed, it is known as funnel chest. And in some cases, the sternum is protruding out and the ribs are behind. So this is known as the pigeon chest deformity. So that was all about the sternum. Thank you so much for watching.